We are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win Show. Good morning and welcome to another Evolve to Win show with Heather and Paul. Hey, happy Monday. So we are talking about positioning and how positioning is everything. And so what do we mean by positioning, Heather? Well, you know, what's really interesting is Paul and I both had two coaching conversations just last week with two totally different issues that people were struggling with. People who were struggling to get someone to show up for a meeting uh, get someone to prepare or do work that they had been asked to do. And in both cases, we said, well, tell us about your positioning. And both of our clients said, what do you mean by positioning? So I think it's actually a really fair question. And it's really the way that you help someone to understand why you're asking them to do what you're asking them to do. Right. Why you're asking them to attend. What's in it for them? And I think that positioning is so much a piece of the puzzle when it comes to influence and how do you get people really engaged. Um, think about it this way. If you're just told to show up for a meeting at some random point in time, but there's no information given to you about why this meeting is important or what they want to accomplish during the meeting, it may just feel like another meeting. Right. And so there's less than enthusiastic people showing up for this meeting. So what do you do about that? It's all in how you position that meeting. Why are you holding the meeting? And, and sometimes it's about helping people to really get clear on the purpose for the meeting, really get clear on the purpose for whatever it is that you're asking them to do. Now, one of the things that we know for certain is that one of the biggest causes of breakdowns or upset has to do with people having unfulfilled expectations. So I expect something to be a certain way, and then it's not that way, and then I get mad that it's not that way. And can you imagine if, if you, you have a thought about what you want to accomplish, but you don't share that thought, and someone else has a completely different thought about what's being accomplished, and they don't line up, then it's just not going to go that well. So positioning is all about getting people ready for the purpose for your meeting, the purpose for them doing what you need them to right. do. Right, and, and one of the, the biggest areas of positioning where it works the best is around sales. And That's so in true. sales positioning, a lot of salespeople will, will take, if they don't have a sales process, usually the sales process has some positioning up front, meaning that you are giving the uh, prospect buyer information prior to instead of just them calling or you selling saying what the price is you are positioning them to prepare them before you give them the price so that you can overcome objections a lot easier mm -hmm. you can um, build better rapport with them you can put more touches in place prior to the closing of that sale mm -hmm. so things like that yeah so as an example if we have a client who calls and says, hey, um, we're looking for somebody to do a sales training for us and we're looking for someone to come in for a half day, what are your rates? I never answer with the fee without really trying to find right. out what they're seeking to accomplish and helping to show them the value that we bring because otherwise they're only comparing us with other trainers based on cost, but they don't really understand the value that we bring. So that's another way of bringing that home. Now, the other thing about the sales process where positioning I think is so incredible actually works for the salesperson just as well. And that is for every step in the sales process, rather than thinking about and worrying about closing the sale, which is what people are thinking about too often and mm -hmm. then it messes everything up. Instead of thinking about that, you think about how do I get this person to the next step in the process? That's all you ever want to do. You want to imagine what that next step is and position your prospect to just get them to the next step. Help them know what that next step looks like. So if I have an initial inquiry and I'm going to be sending an email, 
I'm going to let the person know the first step is for me to send you an email, get a little bit of information from you, and from there, we're going to schedule a quick 15-minute call. So you're kind of letting them know and positioning them up front for what your sales process looks like. Now, there's a ton of value there, not just for the client to know what they're doing, but for the salesperson only to be interested in getting them to the next step mm -hmm. instead of closing a sale prematurely. Also, you're building integrity throughout that process. So if I say I'm going to do something by tomorrow and I do it by tomorrow, I've already started to show someone that I have follow through, I have integrity. So there's a lot of reasons why positioning works. Yeah, I know. And, and the person that I was coaching, they had a question about positioning because they're having some, doing some in-house training and they need to get certain people on certain teams to come in and do some of the training, online training. Um, so that they, when they're rolling out this new software and they're not getting a great response from the people who are supposed to be taking the online training. Mm -hmm. So I asked him why, you know, why is that happening? Have you positioned them properly? And he said, well, what do you mean by positioning? And I mean, well, do they understand the why, why it's so important for them to do this so that they can move on? Mm -hmm. And he said yes, but I don't necessarily, I, I think that there's more work that needs to be done in that area. And I think when you're explaining it to somebody why and what are the steps that need to be taken and the process, people process things differently. So that for for that particular training, I think it's important that the that the person gives the why, gives the process, gives somebody time to think about that and then being able to uh, take action on it. Yeah, when you think about it, we are competing for people's time mm -hmm. over all else. And time is our most scarce, most valuable resource. And so if you're trying to get someone to do something, whatever that is, attend a training or come to a meeting or have a phone call, whatever it is, if you don't have really strong positioning, there's a good chance you're not even going to get them there or get them to do the thing. Um, but if you do get them there because maybe you're in a position of authority and they have to be there anyway, you're not going to get them fully there, meaning they might be there, they might be present, but they might be less than engaged. Yeah. So the one other thing that I was thinking about is when you're providing a service. So um, let's say that you are a professional service provider, like an attorney, and you are going through a process working with your client. The more that you can tell them up front what that service is going to look like, and I want you to be thinking about whatever service you provide. The more that you can give the big picture of here's the process that we're going to be going through as we work together and also give the client the opportunity to ask questions, make sure that they fully understand. Sometimes I'll even ask them if they understand to feed it back to me just to see like how have I done describing this process. So as an example for us, when we're working together with a client and let's say that we're debriefing one of the assessments that we debrief so we do this with executives all the time where they take a multi multiple part assessment that tells them everything from their behavioral style to why they do what they do what their internal motivators are to how they process and make decisions when i get on that phone call to do the debrief i don't just jump right in i will take a few minutes and fully position the conversation. And there's a couple of important things that maybe you can take away for whatever your services you're providing. First is the big picture. So here's what this meeting looks like and here's the outcome. Here's the result that we're after from my perspective. But then I always turn it to them and say, what's most important for you to accomplish during our session together mm -hmm. today? Now, sometimes people get uncomfortable because I've asked them a question that they weren't prepared for. So I may need to soften that a little bit. And then I might say, look, I know I didn't, I didn't ask you this in advance, but you know, you've taken your assessment, you've reviewed your assessment, you may have some questions about it, but I want you to think about a problem or challenge or opportunity that you're having right now in your world, personally or professionally. And we can use that as a context. So what would like what are the frustrations you have that you'd like to overcome? And by doing that, I now have the participant, the client in this case, so fully involved in this meeting, they're starting to get extra excited because we're talking about something that's hugely valuable for them. Mm -hmm. And now I can go through and I can share what I see in the assessment and I can tell them why it's happening, why this is showing up in their world. 
And so then at the end, I make sure at the end of the session, after we've gone through, we've done everything we said we're going to do, I always 100% of the time say, and what was valuable for you during our time together? So that they actually take the time to process and think through everything that happened from their positioning all the way through to what they've experienced. Yeah, so, and, and, it, and it really works well. And I think one other thing before we hop off here, um, how many times have you been asked to go have coffee with somebody that maybe you've networked with or you've met through, however, they called you, they want to set up a meeting and you're going to go and take the time out and you're going to go meet with them. They message you on LinkedIn with some yeah. random message. And, and you say, well, maybe this is a good opportunity for me. Maybe I should meet this person. Maybe they have a good, like, we can work our networks together. Positioning that meeting is all important because up front, and what we mean by positioning is letting the person know that if you're going to meet with them, these are the expectations of the meeting. This is what I would like to get out of it. This is what I would expect that you would like to get out of it. And if you position it properly and it's not something that they want, like if they just want it all from you and they don't want, you know, they don't want to give anything back to you for it they will probably bug out of that meeting if you position it properly. So the great thing about it is it's just setting expectations for a meeting. Yes, and, absolutely. And especially and because so it's – more the, value. Yeah, yeah, and it saves you a lot of time too. And it, and it really starts to deselect people that you want to meet with because if you have your agenda and you can let them know that up front and position exactly what you would be meeting them for, then generally they are very crystal clear on what they – can expect from that meeting. And in that positioning also is the time frame. Hey, I got, this can be a 15 minute, I got a hard stop 15 minute meeting. That's mm -hmm. it. And so that they know that up front so that you don't run off and have end up having an hour meeting that was only supposed to take 15. Yes. And thank you for bringing up that last point. Cause I was going to try to sneak it in on you, which is if you are one of those people who feel like that, you know, others are constantly taking your time or even manipulating how much time they take from you, that's all in the positioning. So just as Paul said, when you walk into any meeting, every meeting, make sure that you understand and have set the expectations for others about not only what you're going to accomplish, but how long that meeting is going to take. And, that, and oftentimes, if I'm in charge of facilitating the meeting, I'll even ask people up front and say, okay, we've got one hour for this meeting and I know everyone has a tight schedule, so would it be okay if I facilitate this meeting powerfully and I keep us on track so that there might be times where I'll ask you to hold something, we'll table something for later, but will you allow me to facilitate this meeting? And you get that agreement up right. front. And when it's time to end the meeting, I'm always looking about five minutes early and I will let everybody know the time and I'll begin to start that wrap up. You should never, never be stuck in that situation where meetings are running long if you're powerful in your positioning. So one last thing. One, this okay. is it, and That's then I'm it. done, right, and then I'm going to stop talking. But there are some people who are listening right now, and they're going, well, but it's not up to me because I'm not the one calling the meeting. My boss is calling the meeting. That, okay, so here's, here are some strategies for you. Use questions. So ask your boss prior to the meeting, hey, can you help me understand the result that you're after for in this meeting? And can you help me understand what I can do to best prepare for this meeting so that I have what you need? Great so point. if they're not telling you you take the responsibility of asking them what they want for the meeting and also the positioning up front. I always, always let people know, even if it's a personal deal, when I have the hard stop. So if you position that up front, then everybody's pretty cool with it and they'll even be reminding you, hey, we've got a hard stop and guess what? We've got a hard stop right now. So <laughs> anyway, um, hopefully you are focused on your own positioning in your world, whatever that is. It can even work with your spouse, by the way, lots of positioning has to happen here, uh, but use it, you can use it powerfully and the better you get at positioning, the more engagement you're gonna have for those around you. Thanks for joining us for another Evolve to Win show.